Hey guys and welcome back. I'm Rachel O'Leary and it is blazing hot outside so we're sitting in my kitchen today because I wanted to talk to you specifically about watering carnivorous plants. Uh, this time of year, even here where it gets pretty rainy, I do have to often supplement the gardens with with water uh, in addition to the rainwater that falls in order to preserve the health of the plants. Now, if you're new here, I grow all North American pitchers, sundews, and companion plants, as well as Venus flytraps uh, in a series of gardens in my yard. The first of which is a Bradley sink bog garden. Now this one, I made a lattice in the bottom of the bog with a standpipe for me to water from below. And I utilize a lot of different mosses on the surface of the bog. And once those start looking a bit dry, I know it's time to water the bog. The other garden that I have is a one I built this spring, which is just a cheap whiskey barrel, resin whiskey barrel bog that has some Saracenia, a couple sundew, and a little bit of moss on the surface. And this one I simply put a standpipe down to the bottom of the whiskey barrel and I can peer into it and see what the water level is in order to gauge when I need to water it, at least until the mosses cover the surface and are more of an indicator for me. Now I also capture rainwater off the roof of my polycarbonate greenhouse, which is the easiest method for me to ensure that I have enough rainwater for both those bogs, as well as some of the bins and water gardens around my yard that I like to use it for. Now indoors I have a biorb, and this is a um, terrarium that requires uh, low TDS water as well, otherwise the mineral content will build up on the interior of the plastic and then it will be scratched when I try and clean it. So today I wanted to just talk to you about some various options of water. Um, as I realize that many of you live in very different climates than myself here in Pennsylvania, perhaps you live in an area with a lot of pollution, which means your rainwater is not appropriate. Perhaps you live in an area where it doesn't rain. So I wanted to just give you some options in order to manage your plants as it seems to me that most often water is the biggest mistake, mistake people make with carnivorous plants. Now, I have to recommend to you guys that you read Peter D'Amato's book, The Savage Garden. It is incredible. I'll put a link to it and as well as any products that I show you in this video in the description box down below. Um, it is basically the Bible of carnivorous plant keeping. And in his book, he says that for the vast majority of carnivorous plants, uh, water with a concentrate of 100 ppm or less of TDS is really what's ideal for carnivorous plants. So you can get away with using water up to 160 um, parts per million of TDS as long as you get profound rains that'll rinse out any accumulated minerals over time. That mineral content is what's really not good for our carnivorous plants and over time it will cause them to shrivel and eventually die if you're using the wrong water for them. Um, so today I have several samples. I have tap water, I have my rain water, I have um, some bottled water, which we'll see together if it's good or not. Um, I think it's important to mention that not all bottled water is created equal. Uh, the vast majority of them are not labeled with things like their PPM of TDS. Though think ones like Evian are, and I think it's close to 400, but don't quote me on that. It's on the label, which is clearly way too high for our carnivorous plants. So in general, I avoid bottled water. Um, I do buy baby water from the baby aisle at the grocery store or the drugstore, as that is generally distilled water uh, meant to be mixed with formula, and it's pretty inexpensive if you don't need a lot. Um, I also picked up this zero water water filter. I actually ordered it over three months ago and it finally came. Um, I guess because of COVID, there were a lot of delays. So my bio is looking kind of rough right now because I haven't had the proper water. Anyway, I wanted to take my TDS pen and test all of these samples. Um, now I have a pretty good idea of my tap water just because of my all of my aquariums. Um, but I just want to talk a little bit about the various sources or options for you guys. So let's get started. Here are the samples I've collected and this is actually the TDS pen that came with my um, zero water water filter. Uh, you know, not all TDS meters are created equally, but you know, we basically just need a guideline. We want to make sure it's definitely under 160 and preferably 100 or lower. So all you do is you take this lid off, turn the on button, put it in the water, and the probe will read what it is. Now, if you see here, the rainwater has four ppm. That's super low. That's absolutely perfect for our uh, carnivorous plants. This is my tap water. Again, I have a well, and this will vary seasonally as well as with how much rain we've had. 
my tap water is at 95 ppm so i'm actually one of the lucky ones that can use my tap water for all my plants that require soft or low mineral water now the bottled water is acadia and it is at 20 so surprisingly that one's okay too but it's really not that surprising because that particular brand is bottled and captured here in pennsylvania and this is the zero water which is at 17 ppm so i'm actually pretty lucky in that i could use any of these things now i'll probably stick with the zero water for my biorb just because um I want the lowest ppm in there and one issue with my captured rainwater is that over time from sitting outside it gets a bit of algae in it and i don't really want to add that to a closed system now another thing i do is i keep a notebook of my water test results um you can give me a good idea seasonally what the shift i get is so that i can manage my plants appropriately um, i'm very lucky in that basically all the water i have available to me is safe um, I am going to stick with the zero water for the indoor plants and the rain water for the outdoor plants because of the algae and uh, just slight amount of particulates that come in from the roof of my greenhouse. Um, again, I'll put all the links to the water filter, TDS meters, the book that I mentioned and things like that in the description box down below. Um, I think that picking up a water filter like this is a really reasonable thing to do if you only have a few plants. It would certainly not be at all practical for my bog gardens outdoors. Uh, captured rainwater is really the best way to go there if you have it. Otherwise, you may consider purchasing an RODI unit or at the very least a TDS meter so that you can measure your source water accurately and make sure that you're not doing any damage to your plants. As always, I hope you guys are staying safe and staying healthy and I'll see you in the next video.